So good afternoon, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I assume you still have enough energy to continue, as we are going to continue with our presentation uh, called Grant Opportunities for Research, which is uh, going to be given by the Oksana Zamora. Dr. Oksana Zamora is uh, visiting us uh, from Ukraine, and uh, she is lecturer at some state university. I would like to share her background with you. Oksana Zamora is a PhD and associate uh, professor at the Department of International Economic Relations, some state Ukraine. Ms. Zamora is the president of the Ukrainian Association of the Project Managers. She works as a consultant and the grant funding and internalization for both higher education and for non-profit organization. Now I would like to invite Oksana to stage for her presentation. Uh, whichever you prefer. Hello everyone. I'm going to try to speak slow because usually I speak fast. So if you don't understand me, just raise your hand. Um, can you please raise the hand if you are engaged somehow in research? I will understand the number of people who are engaged in research. Research? One person. Okay, the presentation is irrelevant. <laughs> okay, um, then I will go through this presentation <laughs> very fast, but then we'll focus on individual opportunities for you. So uh, the idea of this presentation <laughs> was to show for uh, to those people who are engaged in research that you can get grants or any other kinds of funding for your research from different sources. Because usually researchers are thinking only about funding from the state, but it's not obligatory so. Um, this is my favorite picture where people say that uh, they don't believe that it's possible to get a grant for research, and indeed it's difficult, but there are ways. And the most uh, important thing to remember is that if you are aiming somewhere in the future to get into research, you will deal with grants. It means that you need to prepare yourself uh, to design a proposal for grants. And second, you need to prepare yourself to present your research so that it will be interesting for donors. Um, so we, we are supposed to talk a, a lot about uh, focus on research in terms of who can fund your research, what, what can be funded, and um, how do you build this uh, your strategy in terms of getting the grants? So uh, basically, this can be useful for you even in terms of individual understanding. You can apply as an individual, and then you rely fully on your um, you know, features, your characters, if you are researchers in, uh, in terms of your quality of uh, papers, uh, citations, innovativity of your proposals. And uh, the other ch choice is to join some group. So researchers usually form groups, and now it is a trend to form trans-sectoral uh, groups, not only focused, for example, in chemistry or engineering. You should join your forces with others. This is what's widely funded. Why? Because it adds additional value for, for your proposals. Uh, also, maybe in future, if you, if you go to research, you will understand that you will need a lot of resources and equipment uh, to have an experiment, uh, and even not to, to go deep into uh, like experiments, laboratories, uh, and centers of excellence. At some point, you will need to meet your partners. For example, to come here, I would also need some money, and the question is where to get them. 
<coughs> that's why uh, people do this networking and join different initiatives which are funded when you are namely working in the group. Uh, so uh, the most common, let's say, and the most accessible form of funding, both for you as individuals not engaged in research, but also for those who work in research, it's mobility of different kinds, short term or long term. And in terms of researchers, there is a specific type of mobility which is called travel grants. It means that you can get funded to go to a conference, uh, you can get funded to meet your partners within, uh, for example, cost action. I will give a, a slide about that. It's an opportunity for researchers to network during three years using the money of the project, go to different locations uh, just to meet or to work or to visit something for study visits. Uh, and, uh, for example, my favorite one, my fa favorite, let's say, in terms of uh, value uh, scholarship is uh, Eiffel Tower scholarship, which allows you to go and explore uh, the libraries in Paris. So if you are interested in libraries, archives and history, you can go there. So this is just an example of such uh, a travel grant. Um, Dedicated to today, this slide says about uh, publication from the um, Guardian. It's five years old article, but it didn't change. I mean, the situation didn't change. It says that uh, usually, even in the United Kingdom, for a woman, it was difficult to get a grant. But then she says, the, uh, the, the person who gave the interview, uh, she says very beautiful phrase, uh, I made it bold. Uh, she has successfully raised substantial sums from other sources, private and overseas. And that's why all the next uh, slides here will be dedicated to this, that you can get research grants, maybe not from your uh, state government or from your university, but look at another sources. And uh, one of them will be business, and another one will be something overseas. What, what it is, we are going to talk about that later. But please pay attention, if you are a woman, there are specific types of grants which allow you first to restart your career. For example, if you give birth, uh, you, you go to this uh, maternity leave and you are dropping out for one to three years out of all this research stuff. So there is a grant to restart it. And it's beneficial because sometimes these grants offer also money for relocation of your family, children, and even, for example, for hiring governess. Uh, so you can bring someone who will take care of a child while you will be doing the, um, the research. So uh, what is needed to get a grant for your research? It's uniqueness uh, of your idea. Somehow you need to analyze what's been funded by this particular donor previously, and then you find what is unique in terms of trends, namely in your science, and then you communicate with your colleagues from uh, bordering topics. Uh, as I said, they, the donors like cross-sectoral uh, topics very much. Uh, then you find approach which was not used before. Uh, for example, if we go away from research and we turn to uh, grants, for example, for youth initiatives, uh, you may find a call where they want you to talk about democracy. Everyone can talk about democracy uh, using seminars, uh, conferences, uh, round tables, but it's not interesting anymore. People are used to it, they are tired of it, and donor can see it in every application, every second application. So you need to find a way to talk about democracy, it will be interesting for, for everyone, including the target audience. And that's why people find a way to talk about democracy, for example, going somewhere on, in an isolated place, uh, playing a fully um, emerging uh, simulation where people feel themselves uh, belonging to another class, let's say. They may be discriminated, they may be involved in government of this uh, local community, and so on. So these simulations, this is interesting because it's a new approach about experience. And the third approach which should be taken into consideration about research grants, it's that your idea should be practically implementable. Uh, and in terms of research, of course, in the future it should be commercialized. And that's why universities try to help uh, the researchers. They establish their offices, which uh, help you to understand, is there already a patent on your idea? 
and is there anyone from the industry who can be interested in commercialization? Um, so sources for your research, and not only research, but also for youth initiatives. I am addressing now to that part of audience who, who is not engaged in uh, research. Uh, first one is crowdfunding. We are used to this. Uh, maybe someone can translate crowdfunding in Turkish if it's not so known. But I, I will explain crowd, it's us, a lot of people. So this is when you can go out to crowd to many people and say, okay, I have a brilliant idea. I want to bring, uh, I don't know, some devices which will give you water free of charge in your university. So who can fund it? Who wants to give me one dollar, five, ten, fifteen? Uh, and these platforms, they are running on their own uh, terms. Some of them want money from you, some of them don't, some of them teach you how to uh, retain the customers and donors for future. Uh, some of them just give you a, a place, a platform to present your idea. And uh, there are different crowdfunding platforms for artists, for ecologists, for, and for scientists and for researchers as well. Uh, another source is grants, that's basically uh, the main topic which we are going to discuss today. And these grants can be given by anyone, and this is uh, where I want to stress, because it can be given not only by, uh, for example, how you are used to, to hear governments or uh, universities or charity funds. This can be given also by companies, and I will give you an example of such uh, grants. It also can be given not directly for research. It can be given for um, some activities where you can use research as a, as a justification, as something through which you collect uh, some needs, some information, and then you publish something. Uh, and uh, the last one is cooperation with business. Uh, this is applicable not only for research, but mostly if you go to a business, then they would be interested in two things, either promotion or something that will be commercialized and bring uh, maybe, a, again, social change, but for, for, for the sake of promotion of business. Uh, so what uh, can be funded? Uh, pretty everything. It depends on the terms of the call. And that's why it's one of the parts of your strategy is that you need to understand uh, who funds what, when, and uh, bre break your idea into smaller pieces. What can be funded by this call, for example? We are buying equipment here. We are training people applying for another call. And uh, we are going for a study visit to learn new experiences to, to another, uh, through another call. Uh, next thing is... Um, each donor has priorities. Uh, for example, if you are young people who want to develop some ecological initiative, you definitely need to search for, for the donor who works in this topic. For example, uh, WWF, and then you see what kind of initiatives they can fund. Uh, another thing here is that in terms of research, uh, donors don't like uh, those research ideas which are circles, circled only on you. Uh, meaning that only you can do it, like you get money, you do research, and, and no one gets success to your results. Your results should be public, uh, in, mostly preferably in open access, and they should be reusable. Uh, for this, there are a lot of policies. If you go to PhD studies, they will explain you about that. For example, European Commission implements a lot of things like uh, data management and so on. Everything should be transparent, and anyone reading your research paper should take it to another conditions, another country, and should be able to repeat. Uh, so why do they give money, and what do they want from you? Uh, of course, they want from you, main thing is positive change. And second thing is promotion. And laughably, but this works also for any other type of grant, even if it's your individual grant. Uh, if it's an individual grant, for example, for my professional advancement, not related to research, they would want me to have a positive change for me, for my career. Uh, if it's for, for young people to participate, for example, in a youth exchange, they would want also certain social positive change and some, something to be changed in your head. That's why a lot of activities in this youth exchange will be focused on bringing you new experiences, new ideas, inspirations, and so on. 
Uh, and if you talk about research, uh, what do they want us to disseminate? The results. These results are usually papers. This is usually talking somewhere in the conferences and so on. So uh, just for your understanding that usually the research proposal is not so scary. Uh, and basically any kind of proposal for an individual grant, which is given for you for mobility, for participation in uh, some kind of training seminar, use exchange conference, uh, they are pretty all the same. Uh, they will be asking you about your motivation and uh, your background, who you are. What, what do you know about this? Uh, if you talk about individual grants, like, like use exchanges, trainings, um, whatever, whatever kind of mobility, uh, they are not focusing much on your background knowledge. If you are talking about grants for your academic studies, for example, if you want to go uh, within Erasmus for semester somewhere, then you definitely need to, to show that, yes, I have some background knowledge, and yes, I am able to study in English at, at a high level, for example, or in German, whatever. Uh, but if you talk about research, they would definitely want to know that your research has some things which I was talking bef about before. Uniqueness, scalability, and so on. Uh, so this is described usually in problem statement. This is where you explain why your research is important then you explain how exactly you're going to work on that. It's, it's like a work plan. You say that I want to visit these five conferences, I want to visit these five libraries, and I'm going to produce one paper, one uh, thesis, and something else. Mm, uh, you, then you prove that you are able to do it. So it's your CV, your motivation, and so on. And then you need to, f to calculate some money. How, how much money do you need? If you're applying uh, as a group or as a university or institution, it will be a little bit more complicated, but then again, you are working in the team, so your team will help you to advance. So um, I was searching some sources which will be relevant for you as uh, citizens of Turkey. And this is uh, the site of Istanbul Research Institute, which uh, updates information about uh, calls which are open for you as citizens and uh, I want you to pay attention to two I liked very much this website because uh, they pay attention to travel grants and conference grants except of individual mobilities uh, fellowships and so on uh, next slides will be dedicated to difficult uh, to different sorry types of uh, sources where you can find information uh, what I uh, noticed that same like in my country in Ukraine, you also have a lot of institutions which are representing interests of uh, other countries, like for example, British Council or American Council, where they want you to advance, where they want you to have mobility to their countries to know more about these countries. But also they give sometimes money for so-called non-resident scholarships. It means that you can do your research or studies here in this country, but using their money. So uh, this is the website of British Council, and they have this tab, which is called Opportunities. And this is an example of grants for international research and co collaborations. As I saw that this is going to be the audience of researchers, I didn't screenshot the calls which are aimed at bachelor and master students, but they are there, so you can check. Uh, so this is just an example of grants for international research collaborations where they want to establish uh, research between academic groups, departments, and institutions. So it can be any level, as you understand. It can be a group, it can be department, and even the university. Uh, the British Institute at Ankara offers another types, which are more focused on people, let's say. Uh, for example, uh, um, Bay, I guess, University of Oxford Martin Harrison Memorial Fellowship. It gives opportunity to come to the United Kingdom for a period of your research. And you design, define the period, they give you up to 60 days, they give you good money for that. Uh, another one is Turkish and Black Sea Scholars, Scholars Fund, and uh, it allows also to go to United Kingdom. So it's partly a travel grant, but travel grant is usually you come for one event for two, three days, and that's it. This one is a mobility grant. It means you can stay longer and do your research. Uh, it's just an example, I remind you. Uh, this is the website of very well-known program in Ukraine. 
And in your country, this program has a longer history uh, and everyone loves it because it, get, it gives you a good scholarship. By the way, you can go there as a master student for sure, about bachelor, I'm not sure. Uh, but I was focusing on PhD grants and uh, postdoctoral and so on. So what they do, they uh, allow you to go to any hosting institution. Uh, in some programs, they select these institutions for you. In some programs, you select it. And uh, they help you to do research, postdoctoral research, or to learn something about leadership, for example. In Ukraine, we, we also like this uh, scholarship very much. It means that if you are not engaged in research, but you want to learn more about governing and experience of organizations, you make a plan which organizations you want to visit, and you can apply. So uh, what may be a problem with this kind of scholarships, not American or British, but in general, these this scholarships when you go somewhere? Uh, the problem could be that they want you to already have so-called either invitation or con consent from the hosting organization. So you mean to contact them and say, hello, we have this topic, do you want me to have, uh, to, to have me? Uh, do you have a person who will supervise me and spend some time on me? Uh, and after that, uh, with this thing, you apply. Uh, just if someone is interested, one of your uh, offices is, is called Fulbright Turkey. They are going to have a Fulbright seminar where, uh, on, on 11th of March. They are going to talk about that. Uh, I remind you not only about research, so uh, you can ask questions. Uh, another example is uh, funding from business. And what I noticed uh, myself is that a business funds not only research, sometimes they fund just, uh, for example, if you're a student and you're uh, studying engineering, you can go to this uh, company for job shadowing or some job training. Uh, they call it internship where you can get skills, it can be paid, it can be, it should be paid mostly because European uh, Commission said it should be paid. So it's, it's one of the ways how to get your practical experiences, but because now you know that when you apply for a job, they usually ask you to present some practical experiences. So uh, this is an exam these are the examples for uh, Turkish citizens, for Turkish researchers, where you can uh, go to Germany or to do some research in collaboration with German organizations because Bayer is a, is a German business. Uh, but there are similar, uh, like Syngenta and so on. Mercedes, by the way, also I saw something. Uh, this is another type of example of sources where you can get money for your ideas. Uh, first, uh, if someone here is interested in digital topic, digital skills, Anyone? Digital? Okay, so this is uh, digital skills and jobs platform should be your Bible, let's say. Uh, it was established by European project implemented by um, a digital SMEs Association of Europe. And what they're doing, they're collecting all possible first resources where you can study, uh, second uh, opportunities and events and uh, grants. Uh, so you can explore this funding by any topic, it's constantly updated and it, it, they gather all possible things, even from European Commission and finishing with small initiatives at the level of the countries. So where I would like to point your attention uh, uh, is uh, the thing which is called open calls. At least in our language, in, in Ukrainian language, we have an issue with this open call because for us open call is just a call open for everyone. Here at this platform, open call means the call uh, which is issued by one big horizon. Horizon is a program by European Commission. Uh, so this project has, for example, the budget of 10 million euro and they do something, they produce some product. And then they want uh, this product to go to another country or to be tested under different conditions. So they say, okay, who wants, we give you 30,000 euro or 200 euro, this one has budget, I think, of 200 euro per, per, per organization. Please take, us pro take our product, we will support you, 
informationally, organizationally, but you need to test it, to implement it, to in integrate it, and so on. So uh, depending on the topic of the project, this one is named TrialsNet, as you see, and they uh, focus on 5G users. Uh, you will be doing something. So there are different topics. Of course, they are all related to digital. And in this case, I want to attract your attention, please, for those who are not related to digital. Even if you're an engineer, if you're an economist, if you're a genetic, you still have a place here because many of these projects, they have this cross-sectoral point. For example, the project where I worked, it's named Aurora, but it has directions of smart solutions for farming, health, uh, urban something, uh, whatever, whatever you name, culture, art. And by the way, for artists, I saw an interesting uh, fellowship to go somewhere to France to live in a nice chateau and collaborate with the scientists from, uh, coming from chemistry, physics and something and they need to create some, some product, artistic product, scientifically based artistic product, talking about the philosophy of life. So see, uh, sometimes you can find opportunities about which you wouldn't think under, under some conditions. Uh, this uh, cost, actions, opportunity is very good, even for those who just start their research career. So someone who is a professor already, who has a good uh, track record in science, they want to expand their network, or they want to attract attention to the topic which was not raised before. They write application, they submit it here, and uh, they get funding from European Commission. And then uh, they say, everyone from the world, you can join. And you can join on different conditions. You can join just to come and visit, uh, uh, I mean, webinars, mostly they do webinars, seminars, and so on. Or you can join and do something and get funded. Publications, conferences, and so on. This is where you don't get money directly, but this is where you get very, very good networking uh, in the topic which is interesting for you. And it's, by the way, very easy. You, lie, you write very short application, very short, saying that I'm interested in this topic, so please uh, uh, let me join. Another thing, uh, which may be interesting uh, both for those who, who are in research, but also in teaching, but also for students. These are any kind of so-called Erasmus Jean Monnet actions. Jean Monnet was one of the fathers of European Commission, of the European Union. He was promoting European values, so the idea of all these actions is to talk about European values. So what they do, they choose some narrow topic, for example, in uh, public finance, uh, practices in European Union. So, and here in Turkey, you need to know about that because of, of, of your strategy, let's say. So what they do, they do public events, they, they do courses for students, they create some materials, videos, whatever they like, but also they fund some kind of part of research. So for you, as for the student, it can be interesting to learn about this, first for free, second to get certain international certificate, and third uh, to learn about European Union things which are not easily found on the internet. Uh, next thing is really research focused, and as we have not many researchers here, I will just mention that uh, there are many opportunities under the program which is called Horizon Europe now, and one of them is very focused on research. It's called Marie Skladowska Curie Actions. And these are the examples of directions of these actions where a researcher can join. So these are postdoctoral fellowships, meaning that you need to defend your PhD and you have eight years to use this opportunity. Doctoral networks and staff exchange. All this is again focused on giving an opportunity for a researcher to go to another country, use another laboratory, environment, network, and so on. Um, this website can be interesting for you as well, not even being researchers. It's called Euraxis. And uh, it has, by the way, pay attention to the tabs on top. It has some additional information which can be interesting not only in terms of jobs or, or grants, uh, there are resources which are useful in terms of understanding how it all works. But also, you can use the filters and see, for example, you want 
to have a short-term position somewhere in, in you know, Italy. So you, you dial Italy and you check what is open. Of course, most of this will be uh, so-called postdoctoral positions, but sometimes I see uh, for master students to come for a semester to do something uh, which you will be instructed what to do uh, by an, a senior researcher in a lab. So uh, sometimes they require very specific knowledge. Sometimes they, they make it very broad because they want some other insights from other uh, topics. Uh, or you can find the position of uh, project manager or whatever. So very useful website for that. Uh, and I also found uh, something similar, uh, I mean, as a hub of uh, grant opportunities for uh, Turkish citizens. This one is called Association of Civil Society Development Center, for example. You have a lot of them, same as Europeans and uh, Ukrainians. Uh, but this is where you can find the topic, and as I said, uh, if you're interested in research, you can do your little research. For example, it can be a topic of um, alert fund for use. Probably it's something about uh, climate, I guess. Focused on the use. You can do activities for fun, for use, but also during these activities you can ask young people about something. Or you can pilot test something. For example, you designed your you know, phone application and you want to see how it works. So you can do it within this project making fun with people but still getting some data and your first publication while you are even a student will be out there. It, maybe not research paper but just a thesis but still you, you will need it for development of your research career. Um, another example of such um, grants which are focused on civil society organizations but still if you use them smart you can use them for your research. It's uh, sustainability accelerator micro grants given by Chatham House there are Chatham House uh, scholarships for going to uh, Britain, if I'm not mistaken, and to study uh, without, with some master degree, but without reference to any, what, what kind of degree you have. And this is where you can contribute to, for example, innovative policy solutions. So, of course, this is where you can be with a, a general background, but this is where you would need to consult someone who has some research background. So these are just uh, things which I found relevant for um, uh, Turkish citizens, and uh, I think I don't have time anymore, right? No? So last thing which, which I would like to tell you. Uh, you definitely have an office which works in your university focused on international programs. You definitely have the office which is called National Agency, Erasmus National Agency, and these are two sources where you can learn about opportunities for you. Uh, the thing is that during my history or experience of working with students is that uh, most students are afraid to go abroad because they say that, okay, I understand English but I cannot explain myself. Or if I see something which is called training course, it means that I will need to know something and I will need to speak English about this topic. It's not obligatory. Uh, and mostly these uh, things like use exchanges and training courses and so on, they are the place where you can practice your even listening uh, to, to English. So uh, maybe you are not interested in research but you definitely will need these international experiences in your work in the future. And this is what, for example, when I consult my students to apply for some serious scholarships, uh, this is what they use in their resume, in their CV, when they need to show some international experience. And many uh, organizations which work uh, internationally and, and where, which offer you good salaries, they want these international experiences. Why? Because we mix our teams all the time. There are foreigners who are coming to, your, to, to these teams. So you need to know how to communicate with them. Because there are cross-cultural differences, which you definitely might notice, even now when we are speaking, I definitely speak somehow a little bit different than Turkish uh, teachers. So how to deal with it, how to communicate nicely, and so on. Another thing is that um, these opportunities which are provided by different donors, universities, and so on, they can be short term. This is another chance for you to try yourself abroad for something like different food, 
uh, being far from home, managing your money, and uh, it takes five days, 10 days, even if you are stressful, you get back and you understand, okay, I'm not going to travel anymore. But if you like it, this is a chance for you to go further. Longer opportunities which are not related to academic studies can be, for example, European um, Solidarity Corp. This is something where they offer you to go somewhere uh, starting from, if I'm not mistaken, uh, three weeks. Uh, they fund your pocket money and the hosting organization takes care of your language courses and your activities. So when you find this, you, you go to their website and you see calls, different calls of different kinds. For example, work with children or support of elderly or planting trees somewhere in the mountains. So you choose what you like and you spend some time there, you come back with incredible experiences. Uh, just for understanding, in, in America there is a similar thing which is called uh, European, uh, sorry, European, um, American Corp. Yes, I forgot, forgot the name. Uh, the thing is that in America they understood this international experience so much that employers, when they see these experiences in the resume of the person, they accept it as a working uh, experiences. Uh, you d maybe you didn't work in according to your profession, but still you got this international experience, as I said, and you got some additional skills. Uh, in, in my reference, I should tell you that I'm a project manager and those project managers who were trained as project managers, whom I know, they usually try to learn something which is strictly in their topic. When I discovered all these opportunities, I traveled for more, I think, than 30 trainings and they were focused on ecology, human trafficking, you know, <laughs> whatever. And now when I design my projects, I feel that my knowledge and experiences are more valuable than those who are focusing namely, for example, on economy. So try to use these opportunities, use the professors who are available for you for consultancy, and luckily you have at least uh, Mustafa, Mr. S Mustafa Seriek, yeah, do I pronounce correctly? Who can tell you about that? Thank you, and if you have any questions, you're welcome to ask. So do we have any question, ladies and gentlemen? So, <laughs> from the front table. Now, uh, we would like to uh, say thank you very much for this great information and for your participation, uh, Dr. Oksana Zamora. Now we would like to ask you to stay at stage as we would like to present a plate of appreciation to you. And to be able to present the plate of appreciation, we also want to invite the associate uh, Dr. Recep Yorumas to stage along with Oksana Zamora, please. You're gonna get the plate. If you cannot take it this stage, yeah. So thank you very much again for your attendance and for your presentation.